Hi, I'm Matt. I help with uh, live streaming events at Wonderville, and I'm joined today by Amanda. Hey, Amanda. Hello. So, Amanda, you're the creator of Sententable. Um, yes. T tell us about it. <laughs> uh, Sententable is a 100 button fighting game. Uh, it, uh, which, yeah, that's <laughs> that's basically it. Um, but what it is, is each player gets 50 buttons and they randomize at the start of every round. Um, so every round you get a new mix of fighting moves, visual effects, and sound effects, and a couple of other things. Sorry, it's been like eight months since I've demoed this. <laughs> but roughly, roughly that. Roughly that. It's a fighting and, game with 100 um, buttons. And that gives, that's a very it's clear a fighting game with vision buttons. right there. It is the ultimate button masher. Uh, when you were sort of designing the game, what what made you want to make a game with a hundred buttons? <laughs> well, I actually woke up one morning and I wanted to make a game with a thousand buttons, and I got talked down to a hundred because, which was good because I'd never actually made anything with a single button on it, so it was probably good to go to a hundred. Um, but I really just wanted something that fit that emotional feeling of when you're like seven and you go to your cousin's house for the first time and they have like Mortal Kombat and you've never played before, I wanted you to experience both sides of that experience where you know exactly what you're doing and you have no idea what you're doing. <laughs> and I felt like a button masher kind of got that across. Yeah, for sure. And it was designed for, a, it was designed originally for, for an art uh, show for small children. So it needed to be durable. And this is, I didn't actually realize, this is your first time doing any sort of like hardware work? Uh, not quite the first time doing hardware work, but it is the first time I had worked with uh, buttons. The first piece I did that was alternative control was more of a soft piece using at, and used a, micro, uh, a microphone. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, so uh, the, the cabinet that's actually at Wonderville is not the first iteration of this game. There have been a few. Oh, no. Um, There's been a few. I guess one that we should certainly mention is played out of a suitcase and currently on auction for this event. <laughs> yeah. There was a, yeah. So uh, the first year that I went to MAGFest, I actually designed a uh, sort of backpack controller that I never fully wired. It's not wired. It's just clicky and touchy. And I wore it around MAGFest as kind of a thing to hold all of the uh, sort of assorted parts for repairing the button board. And also just because people like to touch it while I was like walking through things at MAGFest. Like I'd go stand in line at like food places and people would like click the back yeah. of my back. It seems like a great PR so, piece. Yeah. <laughs> it was great. It was super handy. But uh, yeah, it was uh, that was probably the third button thing I built. Um, and then for MAGFest just last year, uh, sort of working with uh, the MAGFest Indie Arcade and Death by Audio Arcade, uh, we yeah. actually built a cabinet for this thing. And that's what's in Wonderville. And uh, I know we, we talked a lot about like different approaches to how we could build this. I remember my favorite sketch was one where there was like a hub screen and then a bunch of like buttons just scattered all over the place which we quickly, quickly decided was not the thing to try and build on stage at a panel. <laughs> Probably. I liked the, I liked all the ones where it was like a cabinet and it had buttons on the side so that you had to like hug the cabinet almost. I, remember, I, I liked I that. I remember in one of those meetings writing down on my notepad in giant letters, huggable cabinet question mark, and just sort of like pinning that as something to do later. <laughs> and I think, I think Socks at one point suggested like buttons you could kick. Yeah. Which... <laughs> It's, which would have been great and also terrible. Like yeah. there is no reason that would have been awful. Yeah. Like from a from a build from a build standpoint, you should never invite someone to kick your cabinet. Like never. Am I right? Am I correct in remembering that the the program is actually pretty robust in terms of like if half the buttons die, it's still kind of playable. <laughs> Oh yeah, no. Uh, most people don't. Um, I have had. Um, I've gone to a show before and had. I think the max amount I've had go out at a show is forty. I've had forty buttons go out at a show before and not had anyone notice. <laughs> that's excellent. I, it's 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 not, and that's not a programming thing. That's just that's a nature of how that's a nature of the design. People are just like, oh, well, I'm clearly missing something here. And that, it's like, nope, that's that that's just a row just went out. Just keep mashing buttons. It's fine. <laughs> and 
and that was because that's because I didn't know what I was doing. And I didn't, and for the first year, I didn't know that you could crimp wires. No joke. I didn't know that that was a thing. Uh, I, well, no correction. I knew it was a thing and I thought I was doing it and I was not. I'm a big fan of this valuable message of like, <laughs> here's all of the things I didn't know and yet I still managed to make this thing. <laughs> I, I managed to make it. I managed to take it internationally. Um, I was. I, I found out that I was not crimping wires correctly at GDC. <laughs> so, one of the one of the all control people like pulled me aside and was like looked at the underside of my board and was like, "Yeah, all the buttons are pop. You, you didn't crimp anything." And I was like, "Oh, <laughs> well." Our, our, whoops. I remember watching. Um... I think I think it was was it Alan who just like was heads heads down on this for like four hours on a, on the morning of Magfest, yep. and it's just this sea of wires on the other side of the cabin table. <laughs> it's deeply intimidating yep. and extremely impressive. <laughs> yeah, it's um it's a it's a lot of wires because every button requires two, so it, it and very quickly. I mean, with anything that has a hundred of anything. Uh, you're you're just gonna get a lot very quickly. Uh, I can't remember what Robin called it. I think he called it uh, something. It was some German word that basically comes out to be like a wire salad, um, <laughs> like but like something like that. Like it just it looks like a mess. I had a friend 3D print me these little like um, wire connector things that like help like sort it, which I have on my board, but I don't think uh, Wonderville has on theirs, and that helps. A tiny bit but only a little bit there's no way there's no clean way to wire something a hundred times and i remember when we were when the the designs for the cabinet were being sort of iterated on there is a really big question of how do we make sure this thing can function as a table given we really don't want to open it up if something spills on it <laughs> yeah because i mean wonderville's a bar right. So, I mean, that's a big concern. I've never actually had anyone dump things on mine, and mine is a table. Um, I've never had anyone, like, dump things on mine, but I've also never, it's never, like, spent, like, a significant amount of time as a, at a right, bar. Right, right. Like, the worst case scenario is, like, somebody spills something on it and water just, like, pours through it, mm -hmm. but, like, which would suck. But that's never happened. And that was, I remember that was like one of the core goals here is because we sort of said, well, we want to build a cabinet and we want to build a cabinet for this game. And also we need tables for this bar because it's a bar and tables mm -hmm. are cool. And so, you know, it has cup holders because we wanted to be something where you could sit down with a friend and mash buttons for a bit. What? <laughs> and also it needs cup holders because it's going to move. It's going to move. <laughs> There's no way to play it without it physically moving. Just because that's, that if, if, if it's not moving, you're playing it wrong is what you're saying? <laughs> well, no, it's, just, it's a very physically mobile game. Like I've had people play it, even the smaller versions, and it just gets shoved across surfaces. <laughs> like at MAGFest, it usually, if at night, when I come back, uh, or come back in the morning after leaving it up all night, I come back and I, it starts like eight feet from the projector. And it, by the time I come back, it's like up in front of the projector. Like people have scooched it all the way forward just by force over time. Yep. yep. I remember, I remember so, seeing the original build at MAGFest, I guess, two years ago. Um, two or three, or three, yeah. yeah. And, and, and being really impressed by how approachable it was, despite the fact that it has a hundred buttons. <laughs> yeah, it's based on this uh, conceit from uh, my, my partner designs games. And uh, one of the first games that he designed uh, that I saw at a show that did really well um, involved uh, like foot pedals. And it was really nice because like people wouldn't want to play and then he'd go, no, 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 no. And he'd pull them over and he'd be like, well, you, you can drive a car. And like that, that would always like get them over because they would always be like older people, like people who didn't play. And like, no, 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 you can drive a car. And like the thing I like about buttons is like almost no one has never like hit a button. Like you've always hit a button, even if you think, oh, I won't be good at. You've hit a button before. Like you recognize it. So it's like friendlier than like a controller. I think controllers are inherently unfriendly. Because so, it's triggers and sticks, and then the buttons are the simple one, but, like... They're scary. Yeah. Like, I've, 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 like, had, like, 
who knows what you're doing with them and it feels like you're doing something wrong and it's confusing and they're just not very friendly but buttons and especially because it's clear that nobody knows what they're doing <laughs> which is part of the charm yeah <laughs> yeah it's part of the intention all right well thanks so much for talking to me amanda i'm happy to see you around farewell